Let's start this section by a brief introduction to RESTful services, also called RESTful APIs. If you already know what REST is all about, feel free to skip this video. So earlier at the beginning of the course, I introduced you to the client-server architecture. So most, if not all applications we use these days, follow this architecture. The app itself is the client or the front-end part. Under the hood, it needs to talk to the server or the backend to get or save the data. This communication happens using the HTTP protocol, the same protocol that powers our web. So on the server, we expose a bunch of services that are accessible via the HTTP protocol. The client can then directly call these services by sending HTTP requests. Now, this is where REST comes into the picture. REST is short for Representational State Transfer. And I know it probably doesn't make any sense to you because it was introduced by a PhD student as part of his thesis. But the theory aside, REST is basically a convention for building these HTTP services. So we use simple HTTP protocol principles to provide support to create, read, update, and delete data. We refer to these operations altogether as CRUD operations. Now let's explore this convention using a real-world example. Let's say we have a company called Bidly for renting out movies. We have a client app where we manage the list of our customers. On the server, we should expose a service at an endpoint like this. So vidly.com slash API slash customers. So the client can send HTTP requests to this endpoint to talk to our service. Now, a few things about this endpoint you need to know. First of all, the address can start with HTTP or HTTPS. That depends on the application and its requirements. If you want the data to be exchanged on a secure channel, you would use HTTPS. After that, we have the domain of the application. Next, we have slash API. This is not compulsory, but you see a lot of companies follow this convention to expose their RESTful services. They include the word API somewhere in the address. It can be after the domain or it can be a subdomain like api.vidly.com. There is no hard and fast rule. After that, we have slash customers, which refers to the collection of customers in our application. In the REST world, you refer to this part as a resource. We can expose our resources such as customers, movies, rentals on various endpoints. So this is our endpoint to work with the customers. All the operations around customers, such as creating a customer or updating a customer would be done by sending an HTTP request to this endpoint. The type of the HTTP request determines the kind of the operation. So every HTTP request has what we call a verb or a method that determines its type or intention. Here are the standard HTTP methods. We have get for getting data, post for creating data, put for updating data, and delete for deleting data. Now let's explore each of these using our customer's example. To get the list of all customers, we should send an HTTP GET request to this address. Note the plural name customers here. It indicates a list of customers. So when we send an HTTP GET request to this endpoint, our service should send us something like this. So we have an array of customer objects. If we want a single customer, we should include the ID of that customer in the address. Then our server would respond with a customer object like this. Now to update a customer, we should send an HTTP PUT request to this endpoint. And note that again here, we're specifying the ID of the customer to be updated. But also we should include the customer object in the body of the request. So this is a complete representation of the customer object with updated properties. We send this to the server and the server updates the customer with the given ID according to these values. Similarly, to delete a customer, we should send an HTTP delete request to this endpoint. But here we don't need to include the customer object in the body of the request because all we need to delete a customer is an ID. And finally, to create a customer, we need to send an HTTP POST request to this endpoint. Note that here, because we're adding a new customer, we're not dealing with a specific customer, so we don't have the ID in the address. 
We're working with a collection of customers. So we're posting a new customer to this collection. And that's why we should include the customer object in the body of the request. The server gets this object and creates the customer for us. So this is the RESTful convention. We expose our resources, such as customers, using a simple, meaningful address and support various operations around them, such as creating or updating them using standard HTTP methods. Hi guys, it's Mosh here. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I just wanted to let you know that this video is part of my upcoming Node course where you will learn everything about Node from the basic to the advanced topics. If you want to get the full course with up to 90% discount, click on the link in the video description and join my mailing list. I'm not going to spam you and you can unsubscribe at any time. As soon as I publish the course, I'm going to send you a coupon so you get the full course with a huge discount. Thank you and have a great day.